Today's video, we're going to cut down an oak tree, and the main reason we're cutting it down is to harvest the bark for tanning, um, but it's because it's disease, I'll talk about that. And, uh, but also I have a legitimate use for the entire rest of the tree. Now really, I'm not just saying that to be cool, like, oh, I use every part of the tree, I'm righteous but I actually do have a legitimate use for every part of the tree. Um, I won't get around to using all of it probably, but even if I don't, you know, it just rots back into the ground and feeds the forest. So let's get cracking. This is tan oak, Lithocarpus densiflora, or now it's Noro Lithocarpus, I think, because they just changed the name to confuse everybody. This one looks healthy. Uh, this other large one over here looks healthy, but the rest of these are unhealthy and or infected with Phytophthora remorum, which is the organism that causes sudden oak death. If you can see this red staining all in here, that's the Phytophthora infection. And over here, this red right here. So there's a there's a big canker right in this whole area. Probably all of this area is dead already. See some more up here. And today we're actually going to cut down this one. Um, it's definitely infected too. It's got some necrosis and other funky stuff. But in general, I think it's going to peel well and it has a lot of nice thick bark on it. Well, that had the desired effect. So, again, the things I want from this tree. I want the bark for tanning leather. Gorgeous. This is excellent bark for tanning hides. That's why the tree is called tan oak. And then, what else do I want? Firewood. So, I'll be lopping the tree into firewood sections before I peel them. And I also want these limbs for making charcoal. I've been making a lot of charcoal to use as a soil amendment. I'm totally into it. I think about charcoal a lot. To me, it's not like a, a chore that I have to take all these limbs off and deal with them. Um, it's a resource that I'm excited about. So that really makes life better. Let's get to work on this. It's gonna take a while to get this whole tree processed. an axe for a lot of my limbing um, just because it makes me better at using an axe because you can't there's no use having an axe if you don't know how to use it and uh, it's definitely use it or lose it with that axe Apparently I've lost it.
Everything's all cut up, ready to peel. I just wanted to show you um, how awesome this bark is. What, inch and a half thick probably, there. And the closer you get to the base, especially with tan oaks at least, um, you tend to get more tannin. So you can see how red this is. And I've seen stuff that was almost like blood red, but that's typically in uh, really large older trees, you know, a little bit bigger than this. But as you can see, this is, uh, this is pretty great. I'm bringing you this short intermission so that I can show you some leather so you know what I'm talking about when I say I'm tanning leather with oak bark. These are all tanned with tan oak bark, which is what we're gathering from that tree. This is some deer skin, very pliable. Um, it's got this cool crinkly grain. It smells amazing. I could just smell it all day. And it's got this great creaky leather sound to it, which you probably can't hear, but trust me. This is some goat skin. As you can see, this has a smooth surface. It doesn't have any stretch. This has some stretch to it. This does not, um, but it's also still a little bit pliable. I mean, it's not, it's not stiff. It's just stiffer. And I made it that way on purpose, but that also has something to do with the nature of goat skin. This is uh, some bull skin from a bull I ate. And this is heavy duty. You can hear it, it almost has a wood-like quality. Very cool stuff, good for sheaths. There's a sheath that I made from it. And uh, yeah, there's also this I was gonna show you, which is um, a graining board. It's got these grooves on the bottom. This is made from tan oak from a tree I cut down to harvest bark. And it's used to roll the skin on a table to work the fibers and to give it this crinkly surface. So this was uh, softened with that tool. So I'm working on a book on this right now. And it's going to be cool whenever it comes out. I'm thinking within three months, I hope. Um, but every time I work on it, it just seems to get more complicated and longer. And, but it's going to be really good as a result of that. And look forward to a lot more tanning videos. Some of them will be in support of the book. And some will be more just for tanners in general. Um, showing tools, storing skin, skinning, stuff like that. That's really helpful to know and kind of hard to find out. So stay tuned. And let's get back to cutting up that oak tree. As you go up the tree, the bark gets a lot thinner. Um, this piece is from about five feet up. You know, um, this one's probably from eight or 10 feet up. And I don't know, you know, it just gets smaller and smaller. But if it's easy to peel, you know, it just depends on the situation. Like I have so many trees dying of this disease that I should be cutting a tree down every week on either my property or my neighbor's property. And I'm not. So, you know, for me to sit and get every piece of bark off like up to a two inch branch off this tree doesn't make any sense. If I lived in a relative, you know, desert of tanning materials, which a lot of people do, and I didn't have that situation, yeah, I mean, it would be worth it for me to peel more, <clears throat> but as it is, in my situation, it's only worth peeling so much. Also, it depends on how easy it's peeling. So right now, this wood is peeling okay. If it was May or June, it would probably peel a lot easier. Yeah. It's a little bit sticky, not, not a big deal, but it's definitely not peeling great. So that's a factor too. Right now it's, I think, July, it's right in the middle of July. I don't know what the date is. I don't have a lot of use for dates. So, I'll probably peel everything up to this size because it's still quite a bit of canning bark. 
Now this one, I can see some bleeding around here, so there's probably some necrosis, some dead areas in here from the SOD, sudden oak death organism. So those areas also may not peel. That's another factor. Okay, well, they look okay. I don't think the, uh, the these, these just hasn't reached that deep yet. They're just starting. But if I didn't get this tree this year, there's a good chance I wouldn't even be able to peel it um, at this time next year. So there's there's some urgency here. They, they don't call it sudden oak death for nothing. Once those trees die, that bark's not coming off. What the hell? Steven, come on. So yeah, this isn't peeling great. When it's really peeling good, boy, it just pops right off of there with, without really much effort. Now there's a special tool for this it's called a spud. It's just like a wedge-shaped tool for sliding under there. Uh, but I've always found that, you know, especially if I cut it into small pieces, the ax works fine. And I was actually just reading about tan bark harvesters harvesting this stuff because this formed a, a large industry in Northern California uh, for a long time. It's just, uh, you know, be a summer job for people cutting and peeling tan oak. And uh, it said that a lot of them would just use their axes in preference to, uh, you know, dragging a barking spot all around the forest. So that's it. I'm going to start peeling. I have my work cut out for me here. I wanted also to say that um, not all trees have as generous of a peeling season as tan oak does. Uh, this, this can peel through August. And um, again, it's not peeling as well as it was, but it'll still peel. And I've seen it peel as early as um, even March, I think. can't find my big chopping knife, so I'm just going to split all this wood and hope it's underneath. If it's not under there, it's probably under this pile of bark. You can see we got a nice pile of bark here. Look at that. That's a bunch of hides tanned right there. Cool deal. So yeah, I'm just going to split this wood up now. Eleven minutes of splitting. At least half done. I have a feeling my knife's under this bark. I hope so. No! So one other thing I forgot I'm gathering here is these acorn caps. I just want to try them to see if I can tan tan hides with them. So I'm sure they contain tannic acid, but you know it's a matter of how much and what kind of leather they'll make. Nice tidy pile of bark. 
good pile of firewood. It's pretty much all split. I left a few big tough pieces that um, will be easier to split once they're dried up a bit, you know. I've been doing this long enough to know when not to fight a piece of wood. All this brush needs to be dealt with, so what I'll be doing with that pretty much is dragging it down to an area that I'm going to make charcoal in. If I leave any brush up here in the woods, uh, my general rule is if I can make it lay flat on the ground, um, I'll leave it. And anything that can you know, lie down like really flat is going to rot out pretty fast. But if you leave stuff all in tangly piles like this, it's going to be there for a while. So time to drag some brush. I just have a few loose ends to tidy up, like cutting off that stump, picking up the wood with the truck, picking up the bark. Now the bark can sit out here and dry, um, that's fine, until it starts raining. Once it starts raining, it's gonna start losing tannic acid that's gonna leach out. You know, it's like making tea or something, but the tea is what you want, not the bark. I've got all this stuff yarded up close to where it's gonna get burned. All the butt ends are pointing to where I want it. So I can just come and grab it in the same bundles that I drug down here and pull it out here to the charcoal making area. So I make charcoal in this trench. That's one of the methods I'm using. And the stuff that's like this kind of clean, limbed up stuff gets burned in this, this trench here. The brushy stuff like this, well, some of the brushy stuff, if it lays in the pit well, like down low, then I'll use that. But uh, otherwise I'll stack it in tall vertical stacks light it from the top, and when it burns down to a big pile of charcoal, I quench it with water. There's videos on both of those methods that I did, so you can check those out if you're interested. Say hi to the pig. What do you want? What do you want? She wants more food scraps. She's so cute. It's gonna be hard to eat her. Actually, it's not gonna be that hard. All right, look. You should subscribe to my channel. The reason you subscribe to my channel is because I know what the fuck I'm talking about. I'm not doing this stuff for the first time. I've tanned hundreds of hides. I know what I'm talking about, and when I don't, if I'm doing new projects, I usually succeed very well because I have so much experience with similar things and with understanding problems. So I'm just too tired to do this again because I'm fucking tired. I had a long day, very active. I'm fucking tired, I'm brain dead. I can't even finish this video. So just subscribe to my goddamn channel. Thank you.